Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Bad Days in the 15-minute pool on ICC. Bad Days is rated 21-25. Let's check out their stats. 252 games in the 15-minute pool, 153 wins, 92 losses. And they open with D4. I'll play D5. I might play a Slav if given the chance. This is an opening that I used recently in my Blitz match with Kristoff, Blitz Bullet match. And I've been re-examining it. I used to play the Slav a while back, and then I switched to the Semi-Slav, but now I'm kind of going, coming full circle and looking at the Slav once more. So we'll see if he plays C4 or not. Oh, he says in the chat, hey, John, love the channel. Just tell him thanks and good luck. Oh, he doesn't receive tells while playing. <laughs> all right, so he does play C4, and it looks like we may get a Slav after all depending upon if white plays knight c3 or e3, or they could play an offbeat move like queen c2 or queen b3. Okay, so white plays e3. This is also a line that Kristoff played against me multiple times. And black gets to develop the bishop outside of the pawn chain, so that's one nice aspect of this line. Usually I play bishop g6 here. Bishop e4 is a bit more dynamic, but I like bishop g6, so I'm going to stick to this. I know this move much better. So the way that these type of positions usually develop is that white can play to grab the bishop pair, but black can look forward to having a solid pawn structure with many pawns on light squares to compensate for this bishop that will be traded for white's knight. I mean, it often uh, happens that this knight will just be traded the vast majority of the time. Uh, white can delay it as they're doing here with bishop e2. So I'll just play knight bd7, but knight takes g6 will be played sooner or later. Very rarely you see white play something like g3 and then knight g2. Okay, so castles, yep, again, delaying this capture. Here, bishop d6 can be played. There's also knight e4, which I may play because it gives the position a bit of an independent flavor. Yeah, let's go with knight e4. This is a move that I played against... Now Grandmaster Caden Trof, I think he was an IM when I played him. We played at an Invitational tournament in St. Louis a couple years ago. And I got a great position out of this line and failed to win the game. <laughs> I totally blew an excellent attacking position. So knight e4 attacks the knight on h4, trying to force white to make a decision. And if they take on g6 now, I'm happy to take with the h-pawn and potentially use the h-file. So I found that this move can make white a little uncomfortable if they're not expecting it. This could be a case where white plays g3 to protect the knight. If they're unsure of the consequences of knight takes g6, he may do that. But the line here runs knight takes g6, h takes g6, knight takes e4, and then black can either take the knight or play queen h4 even. Okay, so I'll take. I will probably just recapture with the d-pawn. And he takes on d5. Hmm. Not a move I'm familiar with, although it makes perfect sense. So taking with the e pawn would be normal. Just considering if I want to attack h2 before I take. So moves like queen h4 or bishop d6 even. My knight is hanging, so bishop d6 I'd be a little more skeptical of. Although, although if bishop d6, knight takes e4, bishop takes h2, king h1. At minimum, black has a draw. They can move the bishop back. Maybe I even have more of queen h4. But very likely, if bishop d6, he would just play h3 or g3. Probably h3 is safer. So I think I'm just going to recapture. I don't believe I had anything direct there, so we'll just make the simple recapture. And I do believe it's better to take with the e-pawn most of the time in these structures which is a bit of a hard um, thing to puzzle out if you're uncertain of these structures, because taking with the c-pawn seems more consistent. Black would get two center pawns in that case. But taking with the e-pawn has some advantages. So you clear the e-file, you may be able to use that. And also you keep some protection on the queen side, because if I'm going to be attacking down the h-file, it's not out of the question that I castle queen side. And I may want this pawn sitting on c6 to protect my king that will end up on c8. So that's one factor to consider.
Well, he's taking some time in the opening. I sometimes wonder if people who uh, know who I am and you know follow my channel, I, I end up getting paired with them in the 15 minute pool, if they treat me with more respect than they would some other player that they just randomly played in the pool. <laughs> you tend to get that as a higher rated player. You, your opponents will defer to you a bit more and it can be reflected on the clock. So I'll just recapture. He plays d5. Yeah, this is a move that I've seen before as well. So white plays to open the position. I think bishop d6 is the way I should respond here. Attacking the pawn, once again. So he played d5 right away, so that um, means that he was preparing it after knight takes e4. He already had that move in mind. I'm going to attempt to remember some old analysis I have of this position. So bishop d6, h3. After that, I think c5 is the move, striving to keep the position closed. And black has ideas of playing, for instance, queen e7 to e5 and trying to checkmate white on h2. Yeah, so let's play bishop d6 just straight away. And I expect h3 will be the answer, but it's possible white will play g3. So if h3, let's say c5, queen a4, for some reason the move queen a4 sticks in my head. And then let's say queen e7. I'm remembering some lines where black actually castles queenside with the intention of just giving up this pawn. Okay, white plays g3 instead. So g3 blunts the bishop, but it does create some issues here. On f3, that square is weakened. Also, this pawn stands on h2, so it's possible I could go and attack it in the future. If I can get my queen and rook lined up on the h-file, I might have a ready-made attack. Hmm. This line also comes to mind. So now the question, do I play c5? I think I should. Pawn c5. It's been at least four years since I've had this position, I would bet. And I've never had this in a tournament game. I've only had this online. So white is threatening to take on c6, after which my bishop on d6 would be under attack from the queen. I don't really want to take the pawn because queen takes, and that opens the position, and they would be attacking my bishop again. So c5 is the move that keeps the position closed. And then queen a4 would attack this pawn. I'd probably want to defend it with queen e7. And I'm just trying to puzzle out what would happen if, say, bishop b5 then, attacking d7. I may have to play something like f5 in that case. It's not the end of the world. Well, I think c5 has to be played, so there's no use in thinking about it any further. And we'll see what white has in store. I bet moves like queen c2, queen a4, or bishop d2 will be under consideration for my opponent. There could be some themes of rook takes h2, king takes h2, and queen h4 check, because note that g-pawn would be pinned in that case. But probably that's only good if I can quickly get my other rook that's currently on a8 far away from the action. But if I could get it over to h8 to assist in this h-file assault, then I could perhaps unleash a pretty quick attack on white. That remains to be seen. But I can't get too far ahead of myself. I have attacking prospects, but white hasn't weakened themselves to the extent where uh, I'm just going to have a decisive attack immediately. It's going to have to develop over the next few moves, if it exists. And I'm using this time right now to try to remember my analysis while Bad Days is thinking. This is what happens when you've looked at a opening line, but it's been a while since you looked at it. You won't remember the exact move order, but you'll often remember the major details of your work. And for me, the major details that I'm remembering are um, this knight coming to e5 and trying to check on f3 at some point, and also the attack on h2. So 
So I remember looking at both permutations of this line on the previous move in white plate G3, I was mentioning H3 was my expected response or his respected, expected response. So queen a4 hits this pawn. Probably queen e7 has to be played against that. Guarding this pawn. Note the knight can't move, so knight f6 is impossible. So if queen e7, bishop b5, threatening bishop takes d7, check, queen takes d7, queen takes e4, I can always play f5 and just support this pawn. I don't see anything grossly incorrect about that plan. Now, in fact, I think that would be fine. So let's just play queen e7. And if a move like bishop d2 is played, then it is, it's going to be tough for me because I have to figure out if uh, I want to castle queenside. So if bishop d2 castles queenside, looking for the most efficient way to introduce more pieces to the attacking equation, I'd have to reckon with queen takes a7. And then how do I get at that king? That's the big question. Knight e5 right there. White's already checking me on a8. can always block with a bishop, but I have to be absolutely certain about that. Otherwise, I don't know if I can risk it. So bishop d2, castles queenside, queen takes a7. If rook takes h2, king takes h2, queen h4 check, king g2, then they would be threatening my queen. And my rook is not over here yet, so I don't, I don't have any follow-up to that. So that seems premature. If bishop d2 and I don't like castling queenside, my backup plan is just to castle short. And I'll be admitting that I don't have an attack down the h-file, but it's safe and sound. Maybe I can play my knight to f6 then and attack this pawn on d5, which is isolated. That'll be a playable position. All right, so moment of truth right here. <laughs> Do I go bombs away? So castles queen queenside, queen takes a7. What is my attacking follow-up there? Knight e5. But knight e5, I mean, even if I get another move, knight f3 check, it's not quite what I want, I don't think. It's a little slow. Castles queenside, queen takes a7, knight e5. Queen a8 check, bishop b8. I would be on the pawn on d5 then. My rook on d8 would be attacking that pawn. But do I have the time to pull this off? Just coming a little sh coming up a little short on the attacking follow-ups. I think the plan would be knight f3 check, bishop takes f3, pawn takes f3, and then trying to crash through with the capture on h2, king takes h2, queen h4 check, when g2 would be unavailable to the white king. They'd have to go back to g1, and then I could try to mate them on this square. That would be the plan. But do the nuts and bolts work in my favor? So castle queen side, queen takes a7. Knight e5. White could play something like rook fc1, hunting this pawn. That pawn is defended for now, but let's say knight f3 check, bishop takes f3, e takes f3. It's awfully slow. You know, I'm just not seeing it, and I'm afraid that if I spend too much longer, I'm going to get into the danger zone time-wise. So I'm simply going to castle short. I'm choosing the safer option. This is a practical decision. I would have liked to spend more time trying to remember my analysis and uh, to calculate some lines there. But I have to make the pragmatic decision. 
And as I said, I think black has a fully playable position here. Everything's protected. E4 is protected by my queen. Yes, I'm not going to mate white down the h-file. <laughs> we have to let go of that illusion. But I look forward to playing against this d5 pawn. Maybe I can play a6 and b5. And we'll check in the analysis afterwards if castle's queenside was a viable move there. That's instructive, though, because you will be in situations like this in tournament games or in your just regular games online, if you're primarily an online player, you may not remember exactly what to do in a line. You may have a strong inkling that you should do something. But if the decision that you're thinking about undertaking is a risky one, like giving up material, you always have to play based on the circumstances. It's not enough to say, well, I know in this type of position, I usually sacrifice this, or I usually try to checkmate them in this fashion. That's, that's dangerous. That can get you into trouble. In concrete positions where you're giving up material or making some other game-changing decision, you got to be sure. Okay, so rook ad1, that makes sense. I think they're getting ready to move this bishop. I kind of like the look of a6, looking to go b5. Yeah, that guards against bishop b5, and maybe I can expand on the queen side. I do have a 3 versus 2 majority over there, so I think it's fine. And if bishop c3, b5, maybe I can bother white with the potential of b4 attacking that bishop on c3. So they just retreat the queen. That makes sense. Some prophylaxis against b5. I still kind of want to play this move. They could play a4, but maybe c4. a takes b5, a takes b5, b3... Hmm, we could get some play out of that. I think there's a, a high likelihood that b5 will be met by a4, though, because I don't think white wants to sit around and let me keep those pawns where they're at. So what if b5, a4, I just defend, like rook a, b8? They could trade the pawns and then play the rook back to a1 and try to take the file, but then knight f6 attacks this pawn. That's a little awkward for them. Okay, let's play this. Grabbing space. We're about even time-wise. I'm not sure rook ad1 was the best move there. Because for rook ad1 to be good, white has to move this bishop. And perhaps it would have been more flexible to move that bishop first. Or just leave that rook on the a-file. I think they might have wanted to keep it there. So this move I was considering just playing rook ab8. Because, as I mentioned, I think the d5 pawn becomes weak if white tries to take over the a-file again. Let's pre-move this capture. Rook fb8 on the previous move instead of rook ab8 did come into consideration, but my a8 rook was not going to be happy staying on the a-file. In that case, white might not take on b5 at all, so as not to give this rook something to do. So I think this is the proper rook, and... This rook can look forward to coming to e8 or maybe c8. Okay, he does take. So if rook a1, knight f6 is the plan. Asking the white how they plan to defend this guy. b3, conservative move. Makes sense. So stopping any c4 business. I want this pawn better protected so that I can play a piece to e5 without worrying about queen takes e4. So I'm considering playing f5. It's kind of weakening towards my king, though. I could play knight f6 here, but how do I feel about knight f6, bishop c3, bishop e5? In that case, the knight does defend this pawn. But how do I feel about that position? Knight f6, bishop c3, bishop e5, let's say queen b2, fighting for control of the diagonal. Bishop takes, queen takes, rook over. This is a hard pawn to defend. And where else is my knight really going to go? I mean, e5 looks good, but even if it gets there and this pawn's defended, 
I don't know if it has too many prospects. Let's do this. One other line I was considering here was bishop c3, bishop e5, pawn d6. But then I can just play bishop takes d6, and if bishop takes f6, I can take with a g pawn. And I will remain up a pawn there in an opposite colored bishop position. That might not be terrible for white, but I am up a pawn. So I'm defending this. Now I'm thinking of adjusting the course for this rook. I mentioned that e8 or c8 might be the destination. Now I'm thinking of sending it to d8, especially if I get the trade of dark square bishops in. So let's do this as planned. Because now the d file is clear. I've just moved in the past two moves my minor pieces off that file, so rook fd8 will add an attacker to d5. It may not be bad for white to play rook d2, getting ready for rook fd1, doubling and protecting. Okay, they take instead. Ah, I dropped this pawn. I've been doing that lately. I've been dropping pawns. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, you can just take it. That happened in my match with Kristoff as well. There are a couple games where I just didn't uh, pay attention to loose pawns. Now he's thinking about it. He's probably thinking if there's a trap. All right, so how do I make the best of this? I can play queen b2, attacking the bishop, also attacking b3. They can take b5, though. Hmm. I can play rook fd8, looking to gain my pawn back here, but they take b5 once again. So b5 is just hanging now. That's annoying. I can play queen f5, looking to get in queen h3 and maybe future knight g4 ideas, but that's... Also not so threatening. Hmm. Leaning towards rook fc8. Yeah, let's play that. Attack the queen. I'm expecting queen d4. Looking to swap. But maybe I can just keep the queens on the board for now. Blockade this pawn with my queen. Not the greatest situation, but I do see that potentially I could play like rook c2. They may take a measure against that by playing something like rook d2. But my plan would be rook c2, try to bother them. Hmm. Are they dropping the pawn back? Not quite. So that looks like a, a good practical move by white. Because if I take c1, they take, I take with the queen. They trade, trade, they have rook c5 at the end of this line. Attacking my knight and also the pawn. Yeah, good decision right there, I think, by white. So what if I take and then play queen a3, attacking this rook and also attacking that pawn? That might be decent. Let's try that. I'm going to have to play kind of quick here. A little worried about letting this pawn run, potentially, but d6 cannot be played. I am attacking the rook plus that pawn for now. Well played by bad days so far, I think for sure. Let's see what he comes up with here. Rook c5 maybe? Queen takes b3, d6 could be a thought. That d-pawn is strong. So maybe he should just shed the b-pawn in hopes of gaining counterplay with the d-pawn. This is a little tricky to defend, right? I mean, where can white move this rook? Like, b1 defends that pawn and gets the rook out of attack, but queen a2 looks potentially annoying. Attacking the rook and the bishop. Also, that rook is just not well placed on the b file. White wants it on an open file. I think the danger for white here is thinking too long, because as you see, they're approaching two minutes on the clock. Hmm. So this invites b4, attacking the rook, and it appears I can win this. I could give a check, but... Ooh, you know what I could also play here? I could play knight takes d5, couldn't I? 
Knight takes d5, and if queen takes d5, there's queen a1 check forking the king and the rook. But knight takes d5, I think there's a decent chance they'll play rook c5. They're going to see that tactic, and then e4 and this, and also the, the knight are all loose. So b4 is more the way I'm leaning here. Okay, let's do that. Maybe rook c7, queen takes b3, d6, something along those lines. If they could get a bishop to c4, they'd be hitting f7. White under two minutes. Knight takes d5 was a nice tactical shot, but I'm not sure that's even best, so I'm not going to go for it. All right, so let's take that. I think d6. I think white's got to get this pawn going. Yep, there they go. And that makes way for bishop c4, which I think could be key to white's counterplay. Rook d8, perhaps? I would really like to trade queens right now, but I don't think that's going to happen. How about queen e6, bishop c4, queen h3, menacing knight g4? Looks pretty annoying. Queen e6, bishop c4, queen h3. Then let's say bishop back to f1, queen f5 maybe. Bishop c4, knight g4. Okay. Looks all right to me. So if bishop c4, I'm going to really quickly play queen h3. I think that's a move that has potential to unnerve white. We're both at a minute and a half. And this is a pretty concrete threat right now. Knight g4. Just playing for mate. I mentioned this idea a while back. Okay, so now do I play queen f5? I'm leaning towards it. Yeah, let's do it. So now there's some nasty idea with knight g4 attacking f2. Okay, he's going to address that with this move. Doing a good job of defending, as I said. Hmm. Tricky stuff, this position. Okay, got to come here, play a little faster. If I could get this pawn rolling a bit more, then who knows what will happen. Okay, so if queen e6, rook e5 is the idea. Queen e6, rook e5, queen d7. Mm, the queen gets chased around a lot there. Okay, I'm going to do this, and if rook c7, I'm going to go queen f5. Just hard to see what to do now. He's pushing the pawn aggressively. All right, let's come here, attack this. 30 seconds for me. He could take b4 if he wants. That loses this, though. Check. Yeah, now it's an equal end game. Or should be equal end game. I'll play g5 just to stop him from bringing anything up. Bring up our king a little bit. Maybe queen f5 to attack f2. We'll try it. Yeah, just king g1 makes sense. Hmm. Going for this end game. Well, now he offers a draw, but I don't know. That was a mistake by him. Time um, warning. Hmm. Let's go here. Check. Hard to say who's better in this end game now. I don't know. I might have boxed myself into a little bit of a corner here. I kind of don't want to draw, but I think it's equal now. Eh, yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Let's come here. I'm going to try to go knight d3 and attack f2. Check. Okay, now I can win this pawn. 
Let's come Check. here. Check. Come here. Ah, he takes e4. Check. Yeah, uh, I feel a little bit bad about that flag. I did win a pawn at the end, although he did win it back. Could I have kept it in any way? Knight check, king here. Yeah, looks looks like a draw, actually. Even though I win the pawn. If king e5, bishop takes e4. Yeah, this is the reality of increment chess. He said, good game. I think I had you there. I'll tell him. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah, drop the c5 pawn. Well, good game, bad days. I think if he hadn't played queen d4, I was just going to click draw and hope that he took it. I was actually down on time for most of that time scramble. But queen d4 was unnecessary. Maybe I can't win the pawn. Here I didn't play king d5 because of king e3. He's just in time to... Uh, blockade with his king. Interesting. Well, I'll be very curious to see what the analysis has to say on this one. So knight h4, bishop g6. Yeah, so in this line, I was, was as I was saying, white strives to get the bishop bear. And I was following some old analysis that I have, knight e4. Bishop d6 also played very often. So knight e4, take, take. This tends to make white players a little bit nervous, i found, when this exchange happens and your rook is bearing down on h2. The computer will say it's fine for white, but just in my experience from the black side of these lines, I have had good success kind of scaring some players. Okay, so d5. I'm going to add the engine right here. So I played bishop d6. They did play g3. I went pawn c5. Queen a4. So the engine says play f5, but that's not the move I recall. f5 does make sense, though, defending the e4 pawn. So what does it think about queen e7? Queen e7, bishop d2. Okay, so this is the move I wanted to play. I hope the computer tells me it's reckless, and that I have no business castling and allowing queen takes a7. Yeah, it must be a different position I was thinking about. Bishop b8, queen a4. That attacks this pawn, so on knight e5 now, uh, queen takes e4 as possible. This is no good, clearly. Hmm. I think it's a different line I'm thinking about. I'm going to have to go look and see if I can figure out which variation. I remember this castling queenside, pitch the a7 pawn idea. It could be just a slight difference. And it, it might be this. But Stockfish is indicating that this is just good for white. So the idea might be rubbish. Okay, so I castled short. Rook a d1, a6. Yeah, I think the position is roughly even. I do like Black's play, but he handled my queenside expansion well. So a4, and I played rook a b8. The engine says just do this. The thing I didn't like about this line, though, is that after a takes b5, a takes b5, b3, white can break up my pawns. But the engine says that this is slightly better for black. I thought this would turn out to be more of a weakness than a strength, but perhaps white can, uh, well, perhaps black can look forward to pushing this even further. I mean, if I get in like knight c5 and b3 someday, then that pawn could become dangerous. Hmm. I'm surprised that the engine thinks this is better for black, but maybe that pawn has more potential than I'm giving it. That very well could be the case. So c4, playing to restrict this, and if all this happens, this is okay. Just push b4. How does this line go? Bishop takes b4, bishop takes b4, d6. And I assume after this, white will play queen d5, getting on the file and attacking these two minors. Bishop takes g3, queen takes d7, bishop h4, and black is up a pawn in the resulting ending. Hmm. Possible improvement, then, c4. So I did this, white took, and then played b3, a good idea. Yeah, and my next move, next couple moves are probably flawed, because I failed to notice that c5 will be hanging. 
Yeah, I'm I'm in, inclined to agree with the engine evaluation now that white might be slightly better. If knight f6 and bishop e5 doesn't work, then white could assume the advantage here. I think it all revolves around how strong or weak d5 really is. That pawn is isolated. I thought I could play to surround it, like knight f6, bishop e5, rook fd8. But white proved that that is not a trivial task. Yeah, and here I should probably play something like this. That way, if bishop takes f6, I can just take this way. Even this position is roughly equal from the looks of it. Just lost sight of that c5 pawn, pure and simple. Yep. <laughs> and I saw it right here, but it was too late. Queen takes c5. And now we're scrambling a pawn down. So rook fc8, queen d4. Queen d6, yep, just blockade the pawn. Rook c1, that one surprised me a little bit, but actually I think it's a good idea. So the main point of this move is that if I try to directly win the pawn back like this, and then queen takes d5, I get the pawn back for a moment, but rook c5 forks the, or double attacks the knight and the pawn, and will win it uh, back again with a big advantage, I think, in the resulting rook and knight versus rook and bishop scenario. White will have this b pawn after the knight moves. So I didn't like that. So I played queen a3 looking to attack the b pawn plus the rook. The end it says just go for this though. It's kind of a depressing ending though. I'd like to keep more resources on the board. When you've made a mistake and you're trying to claw back into the game, you're searching for compensation. Usually you want to keep material on and um, that gives you a better chance of getting back in things. So rook c3, so already we're approaching time pressure. And here I mentioned knight takes d5, which has the nice tactical point that if queen takes d5, queen a1 check, check wins the rook, and black would be up the exchange. But I didn't like the look of just rook c5, and I have all these weaknesses. And then the white queen covers a1. This didn't appeal to me. Knight f6, trying to cover here. b4, this pawn is weak. So in some ways, losing that d-pawn makes the position uh, even easier for white to play. Whereas if they keep the d-pawn, they always have to figure out how, they, how they're going to defend it. And if I can distract them and kind of tear their um, attention towards both the d and the b-pawn, I might have a good chance of winning one of them, preferably the b-pawn like I did in the game. Although my b-pawn never became as powerful as I would have liked. So here I played b4, forcing the rook away. And then I do get my pawn back, but d6. Yeah, and I think bad days played played fine after this. They were very cognizant of the time. You could see that. They were doing their utmost to play quickly. So here, white can ignore the attack on h2. Really, rook c7. I'm not going to play this move yet, because I want to work this out for myself. If rook c7 is played and then knight g4, why is white surviving and even thriving? It must be because of rook takes f7, queen takes h2 check, king f1. And because this rook would be on f7, then it defends the f2 pawn. So I don't have queen takes f2 mate. Amazing. And if queen h1 check, king e2, and they even have f3 guarded, so I don't even have queen f3 check. That's a hard detail to spot especially with limited time. So let's verify that. So if here, knight g4 looks bad for white, this and this is the threat, but white can simply take. Queen check. takes h2. I get in one scary looking check, but yep, no mate. Also they're threatening mate, queen takes g7. That's game over. And they're threatening all sorts of discoveries with this rook, the bishop on c4. Hmm. Well, I'm glad white didn't spot that. <laughs> So bishop f1, queen f5, rook here. Now I played queen g4. I was just trying to annoy them with my queen. I think white's definitely still better here. But time, time, time. Rook c7, queen f5, trying to stay active. But this is bad in view of bishop c4. And that's the same reason. You know, white was reluctant to play this, and I didn't really think they could because of this move. But it's the same line. Take here and, well, here, 
definitely knight g4 is failing. I just get mated right away. <laughs> but um, yeah, even something like moving the king is probably going to fail. I expect even this is just really good for white. My king Check. is completely exposed. The d-pawn is dangerous. These don't coordinate well, my rook and my queen. Yeah, so white had a couple ways to punish me that in a position with more time, they probably would have figured out. Rook d8. Yeah, and then they decided to take the practical decision of uh, giving up the d-pawn, but ensuring that they win the b-pawn. Again, white's probably just better, so they likely shouldn't do this, but... Well, it's harder now that this pawn is under attack three times, but g4 strives to force my queen away from defending that pawn, or yeah, attacking that pawn. So if queen e6, I assume bishop c4 is going to be the reply. Queen e7, bishop b5, white gets to defend this. Yeah, and black still has issues to solve. Rook c8 could be coming. So instead, yeah, rook c8, Check. take, take, then take here. So now we're in a roughly equal slash drawn position. So these, these are kind of like difficult scenarios with no increment. And neither of us offered a draw here. I'm down on time, so I don't, I don't know if I really have the right to offer a draw. I could, I guess, but um, so I just, I just played. But we get into a position where after queen d4, it seemed to me like I might have some winning chances. If he had just like shuffled here, I was gonna click that draw button. But queen d4, and he's isolating this pawn. And in the limited time I had to gauge this, it seemed like I might be able to win it. But that also turned out to be erroneous, because again, if king d5, king e3... And actually here I might be in trouble, because I can't win that pawn, and... Yeah, if my knight moves, bishop takes e4 is coming. So this does appear to be just drawn now. Check. Knight d5, yeah, f6. He started, he started spending a long time, though. Yeah, he had 31 seconds here and played bishop h1. Check. And then I even won the d pawn, but it's still probably a draw. King e3. Check. Okay, what did I miss? Knight a3, wow. Knight a3, king e3, king e5, bishop takes, knight check. check. Okay, so I can try to draw the king away. And if king d3, note that king f3 would fail to knight d2, forking check. the king and the bishop. And if king d3 check, check here, oh, I can swing around check. and grab the f pawn. That's cool. So now the king is overloaded, trying to defend the bishop plus the pawn. King f3, take here. Bishop c2. Knight takes h3. And then my knight is on the verge of being trapped, but if king here, knight g1, I assume? <laughs> Wild stuff. Bishop h7 is the best move for some reason. <laughs> what if I do this? Just g4. And the engine thinks that white will make a draw, despite being down two pawns. Hmm, that's kind of a fascinating ending. Okay, so when we're both under 10 seconds and I win the pawn, it looks Check. like I could make something out of this, although as Check. I played it, yeah, Check. right here, I'm just losing the pawn, but he had no time left. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I feel a little bit bad about this flag because he played well, but he used, like, so much time there at the end. And... Yeah, it's, it's one of these Check. scenarios that can kind of go either way. Like, maybe I should give the draw. Maybe I shouldn't. Check. Just kind of the reality of playing without increment. I think the position's complex enough where, you know, I wouldn't fault uh, someone for playing on against me as black, especially if they just won the pawn. But I do feel a little bad about that flag. But anyways, bad days if you're watching this. Good game. I think you played well. And um, I'm going to try to find my analysis on this line. So... Hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Talk to you guys later. Bye.